Hey everybody, this is Sonia de Suro filming today for the SultanFoundation.org. You can find them online, really, really cool nonprofit organization. You can donate if you've had a good year and you feel generous, or if you need financial aid, they give $10,000 a year uh, for training for West Coast Swing and also passes for events when those are happening. Uh, so really cool concept, check it out, the SultanFoundation.org. Org. Today I want to talk to you about core engagement and we'll do kind of an easy workout with it and exploration so you can find it in a different dif, 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 in a different way instead of you just hearing engage your core and that's your West Coast swing. So first step, we're going to be on the floor. Feel free to use a mat if you are so inclined. I'm just uh, that hardcore that I don't use a mat. Um, First thing we're going to do that's going to be a little bit different than what you've heard probably for um, abs and core engagement is that we're going to try to find a neutral back. So a lot of the time when you do like an ab, um, you know, gym training or something, you're going to hear, which is absolutely fine, you're going to hear, make sure to uh, tilt the pelvis and then have your back completely on the floor so there's no space here. That's awesome. What I want you to do now for your West Coast Swing is find your neutral that you're going to dance with. Because when I'm going to be dancing standing up, I'm not going to be in this position, right? I'm going to find this neutral. What that looks like on the floor is I want you to find your two little hip bone sticking out here and your pelvis, uh, pelvic bone. These three should be aligned. So here, hip bones are out, up and forward, so much space in my back, that's not my neutral pelvis or spine, or if my pelvic bone is sticking out, it's probably where I'd want to be when I do my gym training. So going in the middle with that flat hip bone, pelvic bone, I could put a tray with soup in it and it would stay inside of the bowl. So from here, you're going to bend your legs. Already here, it's easy to go there, full back on the floor. I want you to keep that neutral pelvis and spine. You're going to think here that you're trying to stop peeing. Hopefully you were not peeing on your floor. If you were, you can stop this. Uh, if you weren't, think of those muscles engaging so it's really, really deep. Um, you can imagine also if you were doing like climbing or something like that when you have the harness and it's holding you up. So those are the muscles I want to engage. So I shouldn't feel anything right now here, like closing the rib cage. Just concentrating on the bottom, uh, really pelvic floor muscles. So I'm trying not to pee, squeezing down there, releasing, kind of ke uh, Kegel exercise. I was gonna say it with a French accent, but don't mind me. So you can try this a few times, just engaging. I know there's not much of visual here, but just appreciate the thought that is here. And then releasing. From here, you can start thinking of closing your hips or your two hip bones, bringing them a little bit more together. So that's engaging the lower abs. It's a weird sensation to find, so I would recommend with your hands, like finding your two hip bone, going on the outside and actually pushing them and closing them together so you can find the idea of the sensation. So neutral spine, getting my hip bones close together and finding that sensation. So right now, hopefully, I have my pelvic floor engaged, I have my lower ab engaged and I can still breathe, yeah. Find an engagement that's not too extreme so I'm not like <laughs> and I can't move or I can't breathe. So you can find your maximum. Let's say I'm at 10 out of 10 here of contraction. And then lower down to maybe a 5 so I can keep this position. From here, check if your rib cage has a tendency to open. So sometimes when we engage the abs for some reason, we have a tendency to be here. So I want you to use your breath every time you're trying to find something with the rib cage, the breath is going to help you a lot. So use your breath, breathe out, close that rib cage, 
and try to find that position. Also not extreme, I'm not breathing all the air out and then I'm not managing to breathe, right? So finding all my neutral here. From there, if that's enough, you can stop. If you want to do a little bit more, bring the two legs 90 degrees. Again, neutral spine. So I have a little space in my back. That's me. Maybe your, your body is different. You have more space, a little less space. As long as this is neutral and your abs are engaged. Two arms up. You can think of your frame also having the shoulders down here. Maybe that's enough. Like I already feel it a lot in my lower abs right now. If you are crazy and you want to do more, you can go with one leg, tap down with the foot, come back. If you're actually doing this right, I promise, like I'm working a lot right now. So here, other leg, come back, it's normal, there's a little shaking. If you're absolutely insane, you can go with opposite arm, opposite leg, coming back, keeping that neutral back here, coming back, and then same thing here, be careful when you open the arm, this is not happening, you're changing your spine right now, too much space in my back, too much open in the ribcage, right, do this as many times as that feels comfortable, again, you don't have to get there, you can stay just with the legs on the floor, from here, again, focusing on the lower abs, lower engagement, this is closed, but I can still breathe, I'm going to extend my legs. You can choose pointed feet, which you're going to work through when you do your rolling action, or you can go with flex. What I want you to think about is that glutes are engaged, legs are straight, so I'm not just here, right? There's energy going through my entire body. You can do a little bit of a turnout, bring your legs together, find the position you're going to be in when you're standing up. Still have this neutral space. From here, try to move your legs around without, again, releasing. So see this, two hip bones are not even to the floor. So keeping this even, seeing, okay, this is as much turnout as I can do right now. Can I extend my leg without releasing? All right, this is my max. If I get here, if I'm standing up and I put my leg to my side, I know this is not going to be engaged. Again, if you want to go in that kind of styling somewhere, maybe that can work, but you're not helping your, your balance and your position. Here, straight up, it can be a bent leg. I don't really care what kind of aesthetic you're going for. I just want to see that you're managing to keeping this. Sometimes when I do this on the floor, I feel like I'm keeping the right position, but I'm actually disengaging my pelvic floor. So always go back to this. Am I squeezing and not peeing on the floor? I do not want to wash my floor. Here you can try with maybe two legs. Again, you're not pushing your back into the floor. Neutral, da -da 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 -da. flex, rotation, right? Anything you want to explore. Feel free to put music on it that inspires you to move in different ways. Second part of this, go back with your straight legs, neutral spine, engage your pelvic floor, your cage is closed, not crazy closed, but just so it's not flaring up here. And then we start moving the upper body. I want you to be careful moving the upper body. If you go here, you see how my belly is pushing out and it's not about how much belly I have, it's just about the position and the engagement. That means my abs are not engaged anymore. Right? So I'm going to keep this engaged, neutral spine, go up. If I can, my belly stayed the same position it was before. Awesome. Here, move the upper body. I can go to the side. I can lift up. I can be down and open without opening the ribcage. I can find a range of motion with my arms, sideways. Am I still engaged with the legs or are they just here? Right, so energy through the entire body. From here, if that was comfortable and you were managing to keep everything engaged, maybe you move the legs and the arms. 
Maybe you rotate to your side and you're still keeping that alignment in your back. All right, same thing, maybe trying it with music if that's more inspiring. Once you're done with that, I want you to pay attention and register the sensations in your body so you can actually reproduce it standing up. So I'm here, little turnout, straight legs, glute engaged, pelvic floor engaged. Just the fact of engaging my pelvic floor makes me feel more grounded. So that's gonna help you a lot with peeling the weight into the floor. Neutral spine, check your hip bone, pelvic bone still aligned, rib cage closed. And then from here, same thing. You can start with just the legs, right? Keeping this position, seeing how much motion, oh, that's cracking. I don't know if you heard that. How much motion I have here. If I go past, maybe I can start tilting. So see, I'm still trying to keep that neutral spine. I'm not going here, which again is not necessarily wrong when you're, when you're styling, you can go anywhere, but know that if you undo your neutral spine, you're gonna work way harder on balance and opposition, like finding, okay, wh where do I need to put this other piece of my body so I can stay on balance because everything is out of whack and know that you'll have to find your neutral spine again when you want to go back to your baseline. So it's time going back, neutral spine, that's about my maximum. After this, you'll see everything starts to tilt forward. So maybe I'm even bringing my upper body down, right? And exploring through those opposition. Same thing with the other leg. Maybe level change. Now try to find that minimum engagement so it doesn't look like everything is stiff out there. So minimum engagement. Going with the legs, maybe stop the legs, find the upper body, arms, range of motion, maybe playing with that upper spine, still keeping this engagement, so I'm not going here and having my lower back rounded, keeping this, playing with the upper body, maybe twisting, maybe side, adding arms, mixing motions together, or going with just one motion, if that's easier. And then put the two pieces together, have your legs move around, your upper body move around, the rib cage is still in. See how it feels with your balance. If you can do a couple things on one leg and it feels easier, see if you're still breathing. Right? And a lot of the breathing is going to go a little bit more to the side of the rib cage. Because if I breathe a lot here, it's going to be hard to keep that, um, those uh, abdominal engaged. So I'm here, breathing to the side, feeling the ground, feeling the balance, testing on one leg. And all the exploration you want. And the last thing you can try, the last. The last thing ever in your life is to try it with some connection. So if you have a partner, great. But without a partner, finding that elastic, weird, blue colored ice pack thing. Uh, <laughs> taking care of your frame, shoulders down. I feel the shoulders down connecting to the engagement of my lower core. And then same thing, just moving from here. I'm not worrying so much about compression and this that and just feeling a stretch connection which I'm going to be in most of the time in my dancing and keeping this aligned and seeing can I stay to stretch while doing this or do I have a tendency to release or is my frame going out of work and that's it for today thank you so much hope you liked it remember if you are in need of financial aid you can look up the siltonfoundation.org. They give about $10,000 a year in um, financial aid for training for your West Coast Swing. They also give passes for events. If you do have some money to spare, they are a nonprofit and they do take donations. This was Sonia and thank you.